You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello, pet parents. Well, today we're going to talk about one of those things that, you know, we we have to do. We don't always love to do it. Our dogs don't always love it, but we have to do it. Brushing our dog's teeth. I have a love-hate relationship with this, but I'm getting toward the love relationship, and you're going to hear about why. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Your dog digs a hole under your fence, and the next thing you know, protect your pets with Dig Defense, the amazing new product that keeps your pets in the yard. Dig Defense is safe, fast, and easy. Each unit is made from 4-gauge galvanized American steel and can be used for repairing digouts, filling gaps, or to hold fences down so pets can't get under them. Dig Defense provides peace of mind that your pets are contained humanely and safely. Visit digdefense.com today. D-I-G-D-E-F-E-N-C-E dot com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Michelle Fern, host of Best Bets for Pets. I have with me Dr. David Dugan. He is the creator of Zootooth. Welcome. Thank you. Now, first of all, what is Zootooth? Zootooth is an anatomically correct toothbrush for dogs. It comes in small, medium, and large, and we also have um, an electric version called the Breeze. It was made specifically with the dog's anatomy in mind. So we found that uh, there were several toothbrushes on the market that are essentially human toothbrushes, and it's no different than what we would use on ourselves. But that really does not work for dogs in that the dog's anatomy is completely different and their needs are different. You know, being a pet parent, and I've had dogs most of my life, but I never thought their jaws are different. They're not like, you know, a people's jaw. I mean, I know their jaws are stronger than, than humans, but I never thought, oh, the anatomy is different. They can't use a regular toothbrush. I just knew that I had to buy a toothbrush for a dog and, you know, it had to be a dog toothbrush, dog, you know, quote, dog toothbrush. And I know always to use dog toothpaste. But this is really interesting to me. What is the difference in how the zoo tooth is different than a regular, you know, doggy type toothbrush? The toothbrushes that you are referring to, the human toothbrushes with a dog paw print or some sort of logo on it, that's really designed for human usage in that our teeth are arranged in a arc form. In dogs, it's an arc form in the front, but as you move back, it actually kind of goes in a serpentine. So some of the teeth in the mid, mid portion are inset, and then it flares out, and then the very last teeth in the back are inset again, which makes them extremely difficult to see, let alone clean them. And so the idea is to have a toothbrush that angles around there to brush the areas that you can't see, but it's definitely reaching those spots. In addition, because the toothbrush is almost like two brushes in one because it's it's double length, you're able to brush more teeth at once, which would uh, reduce your brushing time. And that was something that I found to be pretty important with my lab. He, he only gives me a certain amount of time to do this, and then and that's about it. So we want to make sure that um, more surfaces are brushed at once so that you can reduce your, your brushing time down. Now, that's really interesting to me how, you know, the dog's mouth is shaped different. And I understand what you mean about having a limited amount of time. That's my hate version of brushing the teeth because my dog gives me a little bit of time and that's it. But I have to say, using the zoo tooth, it's a lot easier. You're right. I mean, well, of course you're right. You're the creator. You know, it does brush <laughs> teeth, a lot more teeth faster. Now, I also use the breeze, which is the electronic. Yes. I want you to tell my listeners about that. And then I have a story, which this blew my mind. But please tell my listeners about the breeze. What's, what's, what's the difference between the breeze and the standard zoo tooth toothbrush? The standard toothbrush has a large handle because I found that a very small, thin handle is not adequate 
to be able to um, brush your dog's teeth, to be able to hold it and grip it the right way. But we had a lot of people approach us to say, I use a spin brush on my dog. He likes the electric, but it doesn't get into the spots where I need to. So I created the Breeze, which is an electrified vibration motor system which transmits the uh, energy to the head. And that head is the exact same one as on the manual. So it gets every spot that the manual does, only it's got a gentle vibration. But what I did not want was something that was as loud or as aggressive as some of the leading human electric toothbrushes out there. So I I created something that's uh, 40% quieter and more gentle than uh, a human electric toothbrush. Because some dogs are not going to take to it right away. And we do see this once in a while where, where people will turn on the electric brush and start to go at it. If the dog is not ready for that, if they're not used to that, they won't tolerate it. And so with, with my dog, I started with the manual, and then I used the electric but turned it off and used it like a manual. And then the way the button actuator works, you can actually buzz it just a little bit and each time kind of hold it on a little bit longer. And now I can just turn the thing on and start brushing like I would myself. Well, here's the funny story. My tester, Mr. Z, he's not a little dog. You expect, you know, he's a larger dog, 40 plus pounds. Most larger dogs, you don't expect to be so fearful of everything. (laughs) When I put the flea medicine on him, he jumps. You know, he feels it on his back and he, on you know, between the shoulder blades and he jumps. That's how chicken this dog is. He's, you know, he, he doesn't get nervous with reins, but he's chicken. And I thought, okay, I'm going to try the manual and the electric on him and see. I want to see, you know, if the dogs can tolerate it. And he is, he's the chicken dog, the king of chicken dogs. He's just a a little scaredy cat, big scaredy cat. Not, not so much of people, but just certain things. Just he's sensitive, I guess. And so I tried it on him and I thought, oh, I I have to be careful because I don't want to scare him too much, you know, but I want to try this out. I could not believe that he let me brush his teeth. And I wasn't as patient as you you were with your dog. I didn't wait and start and start. I started a little, but then I put it on and I thought, oh my gosh, he's going to pass out on me or he's just going to bite or he's not a biter, but some things he's he's a, he's black with white spots. He's going to turn, you know, pale. Something's weird is going to happen. I thought I'll, I'll just see, I'll be prepared. If something happens, I'll just stop, of course, you know, and he tolerate. He let me brush his teeth. It wasn't much different than when if I brushed with the toothbrush that was not vibrating. I could not believe it because I have tried another vibrating toothbrush on Mr. Z and it did not go well. <laughs> it did not go well at all. So I was really impressed. I mean, I was just shocked. Well, good, good. The other point that I was trying to get to with designing this brush as well as the breeze is that I want to make it easier for the the operator. Certainly you want to do effective job. You want to be able to reach spots that you can't normally do with a standard toothbrush. But I want the operator to be able to do this. The, the point is I want more people brushing their dog's teeth. I want to make this an easier job. The other thing that I researched and I partnered with veterinarians, and we've talked about this extensively, plaque buildup for dogs is not in the same spot that we do. They have a big salivary gland in their cheeks that deposit a lot of saliva in the upper back teeth, and that's where most most of the plaque develops. In humans, we develop our plaque in the lower front teeth on the tongue side. I'm an oral surgeon for humans, and I'm very familiar with this. Likewise, dogs, through panting action, the tongues are very rough, and they actually will self-cleanse the tongue sides of the teeth. So if you put it all together, there's actually not a whole lot you really have to do brushing a dog's teeth. It's the upper back teeth on the cheek side, and Zootooth is designed to get all the spots on all the teeth, but it's, that's really the area to concentrate on, especially if your dog's only going to give you a limited amount of time. So it isn't as hard as people would tend to think. Are there any tips you can give people that maybe have never brushed their dog's teeth before and are thinking, you know, I really need to start doing this? I mean, I I get my dog's teeth cleaned once a year, and I don't love doing it because they have to go under to get their teeth cleaned, you know, under anesthesia and be out. But I know it's important to get their teeth cleaned. But other than that, just on regular maintenance, what are some good tips to give people so they can start brushing their dog's teeth? What I did with my dog, and this is what I recommend to everybody, is number one, start off slow. There are some situations where you're never approaching a dog's mouth with your hands. And in that situation, if they're, they're completely 
unfamiliar with it, what I try to do, first, number one, you use dog toothpaste, and it has to taste good. And it comes in all different flavors, beef, chicken, mint, vanilla, all different kinds. And what I would recommend is put some on your finger and just rub it on the gums uh, just all the way around so they get used to the idea of something in their mouth, the smell, and the taste, and reward them with a treat afterwards. And then eventually put some on the brush and just have them lick the brush. Keep going, kind of advance it further and brush, vibrate a little bit, you know, move the brush around a little bit in the different spots to get the dog used to it. And again, it's got to be the good flavor toothpaste and always a treat afterwards. So that's a way that I got my dog accustomed to it. And now when I turn the brush on, he comes to me, which is <laughs> kind of shocking, but he knows he's got good stuff coming. So it's, you know, it, it works out very, very well. Now, how often should people brush their dog's teeth? Well, the recommendation is once a day. I have a lot of people that ask that question, and they are saying, would it be okay if I do it once a week? Sure. There's a lot of people that don't do it at all, and that's clearly not the right thing to do. I would suppose give yourself a break to start off once a week, and then, you know, if you could do once a day, that's great. But, you know, once a week probably would would do the job as well. Now, let's talk about... If you don't brush your dog's teeth, what are the downsides of not brushing your dog's teeth? You know, some of us, you know, might have said, well, way back then, you know, when I was a kid, I don't ever remember my, you know, parents brushing my dog's teeth. And is it really that important? What's the downside of it? You know, it isn't really much different uh, than humans. Dogs form plaque. They have bad breath. They develop the same bacteria in the gums and the gum line, as well as cavities that humans do. And so without brushing your teeth, you have premature loss of teeth, you have pain. Of course, the dog can't express that, but we do have, we've heard situations where the dog just stops eating, just does not want to eat, or uh, is the mood changes. They get a little bit more irritable. So they have pain, they have infections, they lose teeth. And again, the teeth most commonly lost are those upper back ones because they're not self-cleansing. Now, there's been studies that show that advanced inflammation in the gums can lead to inflammation in other parts of the body, be it kidneys, heart disease, high blood pressure. There's a number of different things in humans and in dogs that they have been able to link. It's not a strong linkage yet. We don't have, aha, there's the you know evidence right there, but it is definitely part of the, the whole body. If they have a significant amount of inflammation in the mouth, that can definitely affect the rest of the body. You know, it's something that it's not a huge chore. The dog can get used to you brushing its teeth. And it's like a little bit of prevention can really make a difference in your dog's well-being. It does, not it saves you money, too. I mean, it's, yeah. you're talking less veterinary dental bills. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have a question. I've heard, have you ever brushed a cat's teeth or thought about that? I know their teeth are quite different. but they, Well, certainly it's smaller. <laughs> We get asked that question quite a bit. Will our small brush work for a cat? And the answer is yes, it will. But it's still, in my opinion, a little big for that application. We are working on a micro brush for cats. And, you know, it would not be much different as far as the same disease processes that occur, cats losing teeth and periodontal disease. Really, the best thing for cats, dogs, for humans is to brush. And, you know, you see a lot of products out there that are chew products are food additives or water additives. I mean, if those things really worked, we'd have them for ourselves. But brushing is still the number one thing that reduces gum disease and uh, tooth decay. Well, David, this has been super helpful. And I'm sure all the dog parents out there listening are saying, wow, this is such great advice. And I really need to start doing this. Where can they find out more about Zootooth? People can visit our website. It's www.zootooth.com, and that's spelled Z-U-T-U-T-H. And there's everything from instructions, step-by-step instructions on how to approach a dog for toothbrushing if it's the first time. And you can purchase online. There are several stores and veterinary hospitals throughout the country that carry our products. And, of course, we're hoping to get more. That's wonderful. Now, David, is there anything that I, we didn't talk about that you would like to talk about? Ultimately, I think the point that I'd like to drive home is that it is very, very important to maintain dental and oral health for, for dogs and cats, just as it is for us. 
And I want to make the job easier. I want to make this more approachable for pet owners to be able to do this quicker and easier. It isn't something you have to really dread, and you can work it such that your dog can really enjoy it, and uh, then everybody benefits. Exactly. And it's really good to know that if your dog doesn't really like this, you can concentrate on just the area where their you know, saliva is concentrated, more plaque buildup. Just focus on that area until you get your dog gets more comfortable with you covering the, you know, its whole mouth. That's correct. Yeah. So that's great too. Listeners will have more information on this segment of this episode on Best Vets for Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. I'd like to thank Dr. David Dugan for coming on Best Vets for Pets and telling my listeners all about Zoo Tooth. Thank you so much. Well, thanks so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. I'd like to thank Dr. David Dukan for coming on the show and telling my listeners all about Zoo Tooth. Listeners, there are amazing benefits for brushing your dog's teeth. I know it's not the most fun thing, but we need to do it. We need to take care of our dogs and so they remain with us for as long as possible and stay healthy. I would like to thank Mr. Z for being a wonderful tester for the Zoo Tooth and he did a great job. There will be more information on this episode on Best Bets for Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. There'll be a link to the site for Zootooth, and there will be also be a picture of the product, and you could read a bit more about the Zootooth product. You can also find out more at www.zootooth.com. I'd like to thank my listeners. Listeners, if you have any questions, comments on any show, please send them to Michelle at PetLifeRadio.com. I love hearing all of your questions and comments. I can pass them on to my guests. They love to hear questions and comments as well. I'd like to thank Mark Winter for making me and my guests sound good. And my test crew, Mr. Z, especially since he tested the Zoo Tooth, Nikki and Dennis for being great testers. And especially thanks to my listening audience for listening to Best Beds for Pets. I appreciate you so much. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with another great show. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Dog Shelter Blues, the new novel by Mark Conkling. This hard-hitting story lights up the world of animal rescue with engaging characters and their pets. Struggling with their own internal demons as they attempt to rescue innocent creatures that sometimes bring a mysterious transforming power to broken lives. Read the first chapter of Dog Shelter Blues free at dogshelterblues.com. Then come along a breathtaking journey that ends with an astonishing triumph of good over evil. Order your copy of Dog Shelter Blues today. Available at amazon.com and barnesandnoble.com. I Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. Are you crazy about cats? If so, check out The World is Your Litter Box, Deluxe Edition. This clever how-to manual for cats, written by a cat named Quasi, contains more laughs than should be allowable in one book, and is poignantly underscored by the combative yet loving relationship between Quasi and his human. The World is Your Litter Box, Deluxe Edition, is guaranteed to have you laughing your tail off. So, treat yourself to a copy today. Available from Amazon. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Werber from Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. We want to hear from you. Listen in. We're on every Thursday, 1 o'clock Pacific Time, 4 o'clock Eastern Time here on PetLifeRadio.com. We are one of the only live shows on Pet Life Radio, and I'm here to answer your questions. You can call in at 877-385-8882, or you can drop me an email to drjeff at PetLifeRadio.com, and hopefully we'll see you here on Thursdays. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs> Pet 
welcome back, especially all you dog lovers. Okay, what do you do when you wash your dog? I know some of us go to groomers, but a lot of us wash our dog or we take our dog out. They get wet and it's a mess. They shake all over or you go through like 90 million towels. Oh, you're not going to believe this great product I have coming up. I am so excited to introduce Joanna Rhine. She is the top dog president of Soggy Doggy Productions. Welcome, Joanna. Thank you. Great to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you on. So all of us that have dogs and some of us with other animals, you know, they get wet and it doesn't matter whether you give them a bath or they're just coming in from outdoors and you happen to be caught in a downpour, they get wet and it's always a mess. Soggy Doggy has some great solutions for this. Can you tell my listening audience what Soggy Doggy has? Soggy Doggy Productions, we make a full line of, we call them wet dog solutions. So we have doormats in two different sizes that are made from microfiber chenille, and you roll them out, put them by the back door. It's like a shaggy, soft, velvety rug made out of ShamWow. And as the dog walks across the noodley fibers, it just sucks the water and the muck off their paws. It'll even catch debris as they come in, like grass clippings or leaves in the fall, as they walk across the spongy surface. We also make the Soggy Doggy Super Chamois. It's a scarf-like towel made out of the same material with two little hand pockets at the end so that you can really get under their bellies when their bellies are all wet and rub their ears and their tails. And it makes it easy for you to hold the towel and hold the dog while you're trying to give them the rub down. Although we found with the Super Chamois that the noodling material is almost like a massager. So the dogs tend to sit still when they see the Super Chamois coming and love it. And then the most recent addition to our lineup is the Soggy Doggy Swap Mat, a place mat for sloppy dogs. It's actually really just a small version of our doormat. But we had so many people telling us they were using the doormat under the water bowls for their sloppy drinkers, but they were too big to fit under a standard kitchen counter. So we made the slot mat to accommodate a standard kitchen counter size, and people use it under their water bowls and food bowls, soaks up all the water. You know, a lot of the placemats just allow the water to puddle on top, and so then the dog walks right through that water and walks it all over your floors and the slop mat soaks it all up. We've also found that people with smaller dogs tend to use the slop mat by the back door or even in the crate as a crate liner because they're so soft and snuggly, the dogs like sleeping on them. Well, they are very soft and snuggly. And before I tell the listeners all about my experience with the chamois, how did you think up these products? You know, I have four young children and we had a rescue dog, a puppy at the time. This was about three years ago. Well, really four years ago, I started the development and the kids would open the door and let the dog in from the yard. And they thought there was nothing funnier than me yelling, somebody wipe the dog's paws. And they would chase after the dog with the towel. And by the time, you know, the circus had run full course, there were wet paw prints all over the house. And the dog was jumping on the furniture and getting mud and water all over the place. And the kids thought it was funny and the dog thought it was a great game. And so I went to pet stores looking for something. I figured there had to be something for dogs dog paws that would really work. And I couldn't find anything. So we just had two doormats and a row of towels by the back door. So the dog, you know, hopefully would hit something on his way in. And I thought, this is crazy. I I was at a swim meet watching my kids and a little diver, a little kid gets out of the pool and dries his whole body with a tiny piece of diver chamois. And I looked at that and thought, well, if we have that, that can dry the whole child, why is there nothing for the four dog paws? And so I made my own soggy doggy doormat. And the first prototype, I actually went to the hardware store and I got foam and a no slip back and I took a sham wow and I took it all to the Chinese tailor in town and said, I need you to make me a soggy doggy. And he thought I was absolutely nuts. And he tried to make it, brought it home, put it by the back door, set the dog out in the rain, bring the dog in. He takes one look at it. It was orange and jumped right over it. He wouldn't go near it. He wouldn't walk on it. He wanted nothing to do with it. So gave up on that. And then it was a few months later that I found this material actually at a car wash. And they use it for car detailing because it's so absorbent and it attracts 
debris. It has like a magnetic charge, so it attracts the debris, and it's, you know, scratch-free because it's so soft. And so once I had found the material, then I was sort of off, and it took a long time. We had prototypes made and tried different variations and tried to get the dog bone right, and the dog bone is sewn by hand. So um, it took a lot of back and forth, but there we were, and I started the business with one shipment of 500 pieces of beige soggy doggy doormat delivered to my house. And, you know, my husband and my kids looked at me like I was nuts. And I just started selling then to small independent pet stores and home goods stores and gift stores. And it was the winter of 2010. And here in New York and on the East Coast that winter, it rained and snowed for six or seven months straight. We had so much snow, we couldn't even, there was nowhere to put it by the end of the winter. And so the business just took off. And actually, it was all that snow that gave me the idea for the super chamois because people would say, well, I I got the paws, but now there's so much snow that my dog's belly is soaking wet. And I'm using a doormat to try to dry his belly because he likes it so much. So that's how we came up with the idea for the super chamois so that once the dog came in and stood on the doormat, then you could sort of wipe them down with the super chamois and really get their bellies and all the other places that they got snowy and wet. And then what we found is that people use those super chamois, they'll throw them in the back of the car and leave them there if they go to the beach or take the dog on a walk in the woods and they get muddy. They'll leave a doormat in the back of the car for the same reason or use it as a seat cover. Some people put them on the sofas at home. The dogs really love sleeping on them. So we advertise them as crate liners as well. I use the super chamois and I have my tester, Mr. Z is a long haired dog. He's periodically, I shave him down, but he, you know, I'm in an area where on the East coast where it's pretty hot and rainy. And, um, I actually tried it. I gave him a bath and he is really hard to get clean and to get all the water off because long hair and he shakes and it just so much water. I could go through five towels or so. And I thought, okay, let's give the super chamois a shot. And I was really surprised how much water came off. Big, huge difference. Big difference. Because he's not the type of dog that gets blown dry and he won't tolerate it. He doesn't like the hair dryer near him. When he gets groomed, it's pretty much no frills grooming. And so he was the perfect one to test the soggy dog chamois. And it just soaked up the water. I mean, it was. I was really impressed. And even when the soggy doggy chamois was left out in the rain and had to dry, it dried pretty fast too. So I was kind of impressed with that also. That's the amazing stuff about this material is it does. It dries incredibly quickly, which is how it also remains odor-free. The beauty of the super chamois and the doormats is Unlike cotton towels or any other material that you may use around the dog, it never gets that doggy funk, you know, that sort of wet dog, how the towels get that wet dog funk. The super chamois, I will tell you honestly, I've had the same one in a bucket by my back door for at least a year. It's blue, so it doesn't show the dirt. And I don't think we've washed it because (laughs) it just dries the dog, dries up quickly. It may be a little dirty, but it's blue, so we can't see it. And it goes right back in the bucket. And even in the bucket, it dries. I have a question. With the super chamois, I've seen it. Now, does it matter whether you dry the dog with the, I guess, the shaggy side or the other side? Because I tried both and they both worked. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. Well, the intent is to use the noodley side, but it's all the same material. I don't know if you could tell from looking at it, but the way the super chamois is made or at either of our products, it's sort of a long noodley fiber. And that long noodley fiber is made up of thousands and thousands of smaller fibers all spun together. That's what makes the noodle. And then that noodle is woven into a supporting fabric. And so really either side has that same, you know, it's all the same material. So the absorbency and the softness and, and is all there. It's just the noodle side has that much more surface area. And it's all that surface area that soaks up the water. Right. And once you see it and, you know, you put your hands into it and it's just like a, you know, like you said, a long scarf leg, you know, piece of material with with, um, pockets at each end. You put your hands in, you can get in there and get all the water off. I noticed, I thought, when I first looked at it quickly, I thought, I wonder which side. Then I realized, okay, you put your hands in the pockets and get all the, you know, the noodly side is reaching the dog's fur and it gets everything off, you know, cleaned up. It really makes a difference. Now, Joanna, are there any new products coming up that you can let us know about? 
Mm, well, we do have something in development. I'm not sure. It should be available this fall. We're hoping by the end of September, definitely October, sort of in time for holiday. And I will just tease you and say that the idea for this product came from the fact that dogs love sleeping on their soggy doggy doormat. And we've had so many people write in and say, I had to buy another one because the dog kept going to sleep by the back door. And so I would buy another one and put it by my desk and the dog would sleep with me in the office or that kind of thing. So that's all I'll say. But we do have new product in development. Okay, we're going to keep looking out for that. Now I'm sure my listeners are saying, okay, (laughs) where can I get one? Where can I get one? So where can my listeners find out more about Soggy Doggy Productions, Soggy Doggy items, and where they can find Soggy Doggy products? Well, the best place to go is our website, www.soggydoggydoormat.com. And on the soggydoggydoormat.com website, we have all kinds of product information. We have a full listing of all our different products. And we also have a store locator. So you can go there and plug in your zip code or your city or your country and see what you can find there. But probably the website, soggydoggydoormat.com, is the best place to start. Okay, great. Thank you, Joanna, so much for coming on Best Pets for Pets and tell my listeners all about Soggy Doggy products and the Soggy Doggy production story. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. It was great to be here with you today. Listeners, you can find out more about this segment on the episode page. There will be a picture of the Soggy Doggy Chamois and a link to the SoggyDoggyDoormat.com website. You can also find out more by going to SoggyDoggyDoormat.com. This is a great product. It's worth its weight in tons of water. It really works well. I was amazed. It did a great job with Mr. Z and he's long haired. So you can imagine how wet he gets when he takes a bath. Very, very wet. I'd like to thank Joanna Ryan for coming on Best Pets for Pets and telling my listeners all about her great Soggy Doggy production products. I'd like to thank my staff and crew, Mr. Z, Dennis, and Nikki, especially Mr. Z, for testing out the Soggy Doggy chamois. I'd like to thank Mark Winter for making me and my guests sound great. And a huge paw clap pause up (laughs) for my listening audience for all of your great feedback and comments and suggestions you can send comments questions or just you know pictures of your dog using some of the products to michelle at petliferadio.com thank you so much for listening check out the petliferadio.com website for more great episodes you can also search for different products ideas anything pet you can search on PetLifeRadio.com and find a great solution. Thanks, listeners. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.